Welcome to the Higher Ed Retire Podcast with your host, Greg Shepard. Greg is a fee-only financial advisor who specializes in helping those in higher education to take control of their retirement. Since 2001, Greg has helped employees all over the country make the most of their retirement plans. Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Higher Ed Retire Podcast. As always, I am your humble host. My name is Greg Shepard. For those of you not familiar with me or what I do, I do have an investment management firm here in the Kansas City area, but I help those in higher education all over the country navigate and just get the most out of that higher ed retirement plan. Been doing so for 20 years. And I tell you what, before I get going, I seem to always forget. I'm going to, I'm going to recite a couple sentences here, I guess one sentence for disclosure purposes. I've been told it keeps the attorneys at bay. So with that being said, investment advisory services offered by me, Greg Shepard, as an investment advisor rep of SNA Financial Services, which is happens to be a registered investment advisor. And let's remember, let's get this stuff out of the way. Let's all remember that anything I say here should not be, better not be construed as investment advice, especially with these higher ed retirement plans. Make sure you're talking to an investment professional that specializes in higher ed retirement plans or calling the vendors directly to get information regarding the topics I talk about here in this episode and other episodes as well. And by the way, uh, before we get going, I would just notify, I, I logged into my a uh, podcast, what, account, I guess you would call it. And I'm not very familiar with all this stuff. I just record these episodes and let the chips fall where they may in terms of folks listening to them. But looks like I've got over 3,000 downloads. I don't know really if that's good, bad, and different. It sounds like a lot of people. I, I updated this maybe a couple episodes ago and said we were creeping in on 3,000. I just looked this morning and at 3,200. To me, that sounds like a lot of a lot of downloads. Uh, So I tell you what, if you keep listening and downloading, I'll keep recording. So I'm doing my best to educate you and arm you with as much information as possible. Now, today's episode, it's going to be, I guess you call it an update or I'm piggybacking off an episode I did uh, a a few months ago. looks like here back in January. This is May of 2023. So I did it back in January of 2023 titled TIA Traditional and the Financial Advisor's View. So this is, again, a reiteration or an update on that topic. I'm going to give you an idea of what I think about TIA Traditional and, you know, what's transpired and my thoughts around it. Because a lot of you folks out there in higher education are going to own this particular investment. I can't begin to tell you all of the caveats. I don't know how many word descriptors, descripting words I have um, that can well describe this investment, but there's so many caveats, restrictions, uh, liquidity issues around this investment that you better have your ducks in a row, eyes uh, what dotted and T's crossed before you make any decision to get into TI Traditional, and of course, how to extract the monies from the various contracts that you, uh, maybe unbeknownst to you, that you have. It's not uncommon for folks out there in higher education that deal with TI Traditional, I'm sorry, TI CREF, TIA, as they like to be called, to have six, seven different contracts. Each of these contracts have different, uh, we'll call them r- rules, rules <laughs> associated uh, with the TI traditional inside these contracts. So with that being said, I, um, I'm i here to help. I get contacted by folks all over the country quite often. You know, you don't have to be a client of mine for me to help you out. My email, greg at shepherdfinancial.com. Shepherd is S-H-E-P-A-R-D. Phone number 913-521-2381. And I tell you what, let me repeat that a little slower. 913-521-2381. And I tell you what, a lot of you out there have found YouTube videos to be the medium of choice. I no idea why. Uh, That's not for me to decide or me to judge, right? So um, I've had a relentless amount of viewership on YouTube. So please check out Tire Ed on um, YouTube. I'm not even sure how you, you just search for myself, maybe my name, Greg Shepard, or Higher Ed Retire. Maybe that'll work, and I'm sure, I'm sure you'll find me eventually, but there's been quite a few of you, hundreds uh, of you, uh, subscribing and, and taking advantage of that medium over there. So please, by all means, tell me what you think, and uh, contact me for any questions that you may have regarding those videos as well. So my updated thoughts on TI Traditional. I tell you what, as time has gone on, you know, I wrote down a couple 
no, we'll call them topics here to discuss, but I'm just going to more, more or less shoot from the hip. As time has gone on, I have become more, I've cozied up to TI traditional, more so than I certainly did a couple years ago. You know, this all started with interest rates going up, right? So just to give you an idea, let me get my cheat sheet here. Uh, nothing like dead air time as I'm walking across my office, but this is important. So let me give you an idea. Here we are, May 2023. Uh, let me give you the rates uh, for new money going to, into TI Traditional. And this is not going to be an episode where I discuss the nuances, you know, the guaranteed minimums and all of that. Very, very complex information. Folks, you can find that on other podcast episodes and YouTube, what do you call them, clips, I suppose, under Higher Ed Retire. Or contact me directly and I can you know, one-on-one -on -one, uh, discuss that information with you. But new money going into uh, certain contracts. So new money going into RAs, GRAs, uh, ATRAs, and GAs. Folks, you're looking at 6.25%, okay? RCs, which is a retirement choice. And that's a non-liquid account, those RAs and GRAs. RCs, same thing. Non-liquid, you're looking at 6.5%. I can't make this stuff up. Your supplemental accounts, uh, your more liquid accounts, SRAs, GSRAs, you're looking at 5.5%. Retirement Choice Plus, 5 and 3 quarters. And I'll throw this out there for you, a little food for thought. I never in the past would have advocated holding TI Traditional inside an IRA. Okay, now this is a liquid account as well. And, and, and IRAs, I think most folks out there understand. These are accounts, these are IRAs outside of your employer retirement plans. TI Traditional new money going in as of May 2023, you're looking at 5.2%. Phenomenal numbers, phenomenal across the board. Okay, we're kind of splitting hairs when you're talking, you know, 6.5 or 6.25. In my opinion, anything fixed above five, that's fantastic. That's fantastic, okay? So anything I say here, just remember, I, I'm an advocate of TI Traditional where it makes sense. So let's just kind of dive into that. And I had this broken down a little bit, you know, when it comes to my views on TI Traditional. I think it's good when used properly. So let's take um, maybe by age, you younger investors out there. And of course, I'll let you decide what that definition of young is. To me, I'm looking at those, you know, around the 50, definitely 40s and 30s. Okay, let's get that out of the way. But certainly in your 50s, you know, 55, let's face it, we're getting 60 and over. Not as young, not as young, still young in the general scheme of life. But when it comes to what I'm talking about, probably not as young. So let's look at the 50-ish crowd, 40s and 30s for sure. You know, the old, um, I guess, way, maybe not old, but it, 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 it's been taught that when you're younger, you don't necessarily want conservative investments, right? That's been true for the history of investing. The younger you are, typically the more aggressive you want to be. makes a lot of sense. Now, even if you're 40-ish wanting to be aggressive, maybe your, your, your definition of aggressive is an 80-20 or 70-30 split. 70% 70 stocks allocated amongst large, mid, smalls, you know, international, and 30% in bonds, maybe that stable value, cash allocation, okay? Now, think about this. Well, let, let me, I'll, I'll pose it as a question. Well, let me preface my question, <laughs> okay? Let me preface my question here. In, in your accounts, in your higher ed retirement plans, and I'm not throwing a, 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 a huge net that's going to cover all higher ed retirement plans, okay? Let's throw some common sense into this. For most plans I deal with, those higher ed institution uh, choices, the choices within TIA, okay, we're using TIA, of course, the bond choices, B-O-N-D, the bond choices you may have afforded to you, four, five, six, I don't know, you tell me, uh, seven different choices in the bond sleeve of, of, of your plan. Of those bond investments, you know, you're looking at inflation-linked, bond plus, uh, there might be other fund families that have, that have introduced bonds into the lineup as well. And I'm not going to answer this question for you. Uh, this is something you need to think about. Are any of those investments, any of them, going to consistently get five and a half or six percent continuously each year? I can tell you this: this may not apply to your bond, but a bond investment that you might may or may not have. 
But the bond market last year in 2022 exploded, not in a good way, imploded, if you want to use that uh, that descriptor. So the last year, 2022, the aggregate bond index was down like 12%. It was literally the worst bond calendar year in terms of price depreciation ever. And that's dating back to like the 1800s. It was ridiculous, okay? And there's various reasons as to why. But I bring that up uh, just because in the stock market didn't do well last year either. You know, there's a misnomer that uh, stocks and bonds inversely correlate. There's some truth in that, and that's for a different podcast episode, different discussion. But just take a look at last year, 2022. Uh, both correlated basically, not one-to-one, but there was a, a certain correlation, of course. They both went down, okay? Now, again, I bring this up because if you're, let's go back to this investor, this young investor. If you're a 70 30 allocated investor where 30% is allocated towards uh, bonds and you know cash, something more conservative, are those investments going to make 5.5-ish, 6% continuously? Most likely, I am not saying all of these, most likely the answer is no. Because, well, not, not I, I won't use the word because, however, <laughs> the investment choices you have are limited inside that retirement plan. Unless you're going into a broker's link, which is a whole nother can of worms, we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about the core lineup, okay? So you have these investments, uh, bond investments, that may not have a great track record. Does it make sense for new money going in as a younger investor to put that 30% towards TI traditional inside an RA contract getting 6.25%? Or in an RC contract getting 6.5%? Okay, what bond investment in your lineup is going to get that consistently? I'm going to guess the answer is not many, if any, at all. Now, also keep in mind, disclosure here, when you put money into these contracts, I cannot stress this enough. Make sure you know the liquidity issues around it. Okay, if you dump money into that RA contract, you have liquidity issues. Okay, it's not a big deal as long as you know what you're doing and have an exit strategy. Okay, so if you're, I never would have said this years ago, but TI Traditional may have a place in a younger investor's sleeve of their portfolio given these awesome rates that we're seeing as of late. TI Traditional also affords you different, different strategies that I explain uh, within other episodes and my YouTube videos. Uh, one, for example, is a re, I call it a reinvestment strategy. I know Tia uh, calls it something different, but this is where you can take all that, all, that, that legacy money. It's a fancy word for old money, old buckets of money. Take it out of TI Traditional, stick it in something else like stable value, and then reinvest it back in to TI Traditional to get the new awesome rate after 120 days, basically four months. Uh, there's other uh, folks, there's ways you can utilize uh, TPAs, so a transfer payout annuity. Let's say, I'm, th I'm thinking of an, uh, a hypothetical off the top of my head, let's say you directed, which, which this is very common, you've retired and you've directed your transfer payout annuity at, uh, to a rollover IRA, in my case, my clients, we custody over Charles Schwab, but then, you know, you talk to your advisor, you talk to me, and all of a sudden, we decide or we, we, we bring up the fact that, hey, these TI traditional new rates are fantastic. What can we do to take advantage of that? Okay, Mr. and Mrs. Client, now you already have that TPA, transfer payout annuity, going to your rollover IRA. Let's do this. What if we throw this out there that we stop those TPAs and redirect those payments back to that very contract and invest those new monies into TI traditional, therefore, getting those new higher rates. Now, if you're going back into um, an illiquid account like an RA, at some point in the future, you will have to initiate another TPA, but that's that's okay. That could be um, a game plan that fits your situation. What I'm getting at is there's a lot of strategies surrounding TI Traditional that I bet you don't know about. I guarantee you don't know them all. Because uh, I didn't know them all, and I've been doing this for 20 years, and I'm learning things just about every day when it comes to this TI traditional. Uh, so that's just another strategy that a lot of folks don't don't know about. You can even stop, you know, TPAs to a rollover IRA in this case, and start income uh, benefit payments to you if you wanted to do so. 
I've said in the past you don't want to make a mistake in terms of an irrevocable decision. That is very true, but a lot of these decisions can be revocable in a good way if you know what you're doing and done properly. So when I'm talking about TI Traditional and my view on it, there's it's almost two conversations. There's old legacy money and then new money. Uh, new money being maybe the last, I don't have the, uh, the, the calendar of the rates here in front of me, but we're going back to uh, at least, I'd say, latter third of 2022. I'd be I consider new money, legacy money prior to that. Some of those rates might be good. And by the way, if 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 you select lifetime income annuity option, you know the benefit payments for the rest of your life, those older buckets of money are going to be able to pay out higher, typically typically higher than the new new newer money. So make sure you call Tia in that regard. But I'm not a big fan of these legacy. Uh, rates. I mean, they're, they're, it's fine. It served a purpose, but your folks are probably out there getting around 4%. You can go into Tia's website and, and see that for yourself. So uh, I'm not going to get into you know strategies telling you what to do, but that's certainly not as attractive as newer money. Again, latter third of 2022, newer money, getting that five and a half, six and a half percent, depending upon what contract you're in. And I'll tell you this, I'll, I'll uh, expand on this a little bit. I've talked to a lot of folks, a lot of you out there the last um, year or so, and it seems like the consensus, maybe not that, that's not the right word, the overall take on TIAA traditional is there is no gray area, <laughs> okay? I got some of you uh, calling me and you know doing Zoom calls and expletives coming out of your mouth left and right when describing TI traditional because the complexities involved in said investment and the end there's no education unless you do it yourself of course uh, but it's pretty difficult to to extract information from uh, TIA rep they're great people but the TIA reps um, you know they're not gonna open a can of worms for liability purposes and you know your institution probably isn't providing you much education around this stuff so it's 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 on you it's on you to figure this stuff out so there's one camp that just hates it okay I'll put it that way and there's another camp that just loves it, mainly because they're more educated. They knew what they were getting into, and not educated generally speaking, but educated when it comes to the TI traditional. They've done their own due diligence. They knew what they were getting into. Uh, but even those folks will admit that this thing is confusing. I've never, 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 never ran across anybody that just got into TI traditional, said it's the easiest investment, okay, in terms of extraction. Now, the, I'll tell you this. I have, I have had people say, hey, wh what's all the fuss about this TI traditional? Because, you know, I went into TI traditional and I just chose an income annuity option. But then I started asking them questions. And you know the old adage, you don't know what you don't know. So those folks are the ones that don't know all their options, which, which is fine, but there's more to it than what you know. This is why I advocate or I implore, again, different words I can use. I highly stress that you seek the help of an independent fee-only financial advisor that specializes in higher education retirement plans or contact TIA directly when trying to figure out you know, strategies that's afforded to you when it comes to TI traditional. So I can hem and haul all I want. What I want you to do is go back and listen to some of the episodes surrounding TI traditional. Go to the YouTube uh, channel. Is that what it's called? YouTube channel. And look at some episodes around TI Traditional. Watch some episodes. Educate yourself. Please contact me. I'd be, I'd be more than happy to help you out. I got uh, today's Friday. I got had two appointments today re regarding this stuff, and I got another one on Monday. So I'm here to help. Take advantage of that because there's not, as you may have found out, there's not a lot of help out there when it comes to this stuff. So take advantage of it, right? Um, I, I can't think of much else to talk about when it comes to to my view. I, I like it. I, I wouldn't have said this two years ago. I like it for new money. Uh, I think there's a part, I, I like it for younger investors. It, it can make uh, sense for a sleeve of their portfolio. I am not telling you to go out and do it tomorrow, though. This is not investment advice, okay? So know what you're doing. Cross those T's and dot those I's before you get into this stuff. Uh, contact me. Email greg, G-R-E-G, -E at shepherdfinancial.com. Shepherd is S-H-E-P-A-R-D. Again, phone number, 913-521-2381. And I'll close with this. As always, go out there and take control of your retirement today. Take care, folks. Thanks for listening to the Higher Ed Retire Podcast. 
Just because this episode is over doesn't mean you can't continue your retirement journey. Please visit www.hireedretire.com to see how you can work with Greg or to simply ask him a question. Thanks again. S&A Financial Services is a registered investment advisor. Information presented is for educational purposes only and does not intend to make an offer or solicitation for the sale or purchase of any specific securities, investments, or investment strategies. Investments involve risk and, unless otherwise stated, are not guaranteed. Be sure to first consult with a qualified financial advisor and or tax professional before implementing any strategy discussed herein. Past performance is not indicative of future performance.